Hi, everybody. I'm meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Let's go through the nighttime GFS and, and just want to uh, point out a couple of things. First off, this is our major storm that went by just to our south and east today, and we got shaved with that coating to an inch. So it looks like everybody got into a measurable snow for the most part. So I think that pretty well breaks at least the snow drought. And uh, the idea that the New York City is not going to get any snow this year, uh, well, they got some. Okay, so we could see a few snow showers with the Arctic front. That comes through uh, probably between 4 a.m. and 7 a.m., and then we spend the day tomorrow in the icebox, and again on Tuesday and for the start of Wednesday, as this is a very cold air mass. Okay, so the model runs, if they've been anything, they've been remor just remarkably consistent. And in my experience, in the few times that this has happened, um, when models all show the same idea, uh, and it's, then it just becomes a matter of working out the details, and they all keep showing this uh, idea of a major storm developing uh, late this week and into next weekend. Now, I want to point out a couple of errors that I think the, the GFS is making, and this is because I'm 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 really leaning toward the European. And the uh, Yukmets, the uh, British models idea, because the Yukmet and the Euro European are very close. Uh, the new Yukmet is very much like the day run European. And what the GFS does is it actually takes the surface low further south initially. And you see it redeveloping there near Charleston. You have a big high. This is Friday night. Big high uh, in uh, upstate, up into uh, eastern Canada. It's locked into that position that you want to see it if you want to see a heavy snow in the northeast and down into the mid-Atlantic states. And then the low kind of straddles along North Carolina and then kind of does this weird northwest jog. And what it's doing is that this particular model run shows a very vigorous upper air feature, and I'll show you that in a moment. So it almost kind of swallows the surface low underneath it briefly. And then what often happens in those instances is that the low winds up redeveloping to the east uh, and then moving northeastward. So I honestly believe that this position that the model has is probably too far north and west. It, it, it'll probably be more from uh, the northernmost North Carolina out into here. So I think cold. It, I think really this is going to be a matter of uh, snow more than anything else for us. I'm, I'm not really too concerned on this model run. I, again, I, I think that's the model era. And it also wants to hang it around into Sunday morning, making this a very prolonged event. Um, you don't see those kind of things too often, so I don't want to kind of I don't want to make a judgment on that. And then it moves out, and then of course it just has another one um, next week. But who cares? That's next week. Let's. Um, I'm going to jump now to the upper air, and we'll widen out to a full U.S. view so you can get a flavor of what's going on. And let's get that 500 millibar map up, and you can see what happens in the upper air now. <clears throat> This feature, um, there's two things to pay attention to. Now, here is this, here's the upper air disturbance, okay, that's running down uh, from uh, Iowa down to West Texas. It's very strong, very, very obvious here, and very deep. And you also have this northern jet, and that's what's keeping this from lifting up and going to our west. So it kind of progresses along across and then begins to lift up to the northeast. And then this is what happens. This is why it does that kind of northwestern pull. Uh, this might be overdone in my view, um, but we'll see what the European has to say because I really think the European has a very good handle on this. And then out. So all the upper air support is there. I, th I think at this stage now that we're going to be inside five days, we start to work on the details um, in terms of the specifics. Um, I think the idea that a major storm is going to develop, the models have pretty much locked onto this, and I would be shocked to see it start to vary from that uh, at this point. So it'll be just a matter of fine-tuning all of this as we move along. So uh, let's, uh, just for curiosity, I just want to, I'm going to widen out to the full North America view. Oh, good, because we have it in far enough out so we can actually get a flavor of what's going on. Uh, in the upper atmosphere and you can see it's it's all blocky here for the first part of this week and then it, it just kind of reforms up here in Canada the upper high weakens you've got a new vortex up in northwest Canada you've got the system that's moving out now going out into the 50 50 position and it sort of sits there for a little bit but 
what this pattern sets sets how it sets up is that by holding this northern jet across Canada like this, it really prevents this from becoming a typical lake storm. The ridge pops up just enough so that you get something to move up along the coast far enough north, but at the same time, it doesn't fly all the way up so that the whole trough tilts too rapidly and you wind up taking a deep low uh, up inland. At least that's the way it seems to me. And you can see how vigorous it gets. And this upper vortex kind of rotates around, so it keeps a, a cold flow out of Canada intact as we go through next weekend. And then here, uh, as we go through the middle of next week, you still have some semblance of a vortex, and it tries to kind of do the same thing again, although who knows at that point how much real cold air we have, and then, how, again, how real that model is. And then uh, as we uh, head toward the end of the second week, you start to see that ridge start to pop up here as the trough goes down in the western states as this starts to look a little different up here. So it looks like some sort of reorganization is going on uh, that we alluded to, although it doesn't necessarily mean uh, that the pattern uh, switch that we're having is really more away from the block. I, I, I really wasn't 100% sure what it was going to evolve into in the longer term, and I'm still not uh, completely sure. But bottom line is uh, we've got one event at a time to deal with, and that's going to be for uh, this weekend, probably from Friday night into Saturday night or early Sunday morning, who knows, depending on where you are. But all the models have it. We'll evaluate the overnight European uh, in the morning. And in the meantime, uh, have a good night's sleep and enjoy the third day of your holiday weekend. I'll be on Fios One News tomorrow night and all week long following this whole system. And of course, you can get all you want here on my uh, website at uh, meteorologistjoechoffee.com or weatherlongisland.com, which takes you there, or uh, nycweathernow.com, which also takes you there. So have a good day.